Oh, my sweet Elaine. Am I cursed to starve here on this ocean without seeing your face just one more time? Am I... The Curse of Monkey Island. There are a couple of things in this world that are as epic, as groundbreaking, as thrilling, as humorous, as larger than life compared to this game. The Curse of Monkey Island is one of, if not, the most epic adventure games of all time. Immediately when you start this game, it opens up with Guybrush Streetboy entering land and witness a giant, bigger than life battle between his lover Elaine and his arch nemesis LeChuck. And to tell you the truth, this is like the missing good ending from Monkey Island 2. And it is one of the best openings that I've ever seen in a video game, which tells you that this game is the full package. And you know what? That's not the best part of the game because it gets better and better as you go along. I am joined with Hanu the Han Makinen to show everyone why this is one of the best adventure games of all time. Yes, um, to me, the, the Curse of Monkey Island is a great example of taking really the best things from both of the previous games and making it even better. Uh, the Curse of Monkey Island, funny enough, it started off as a project to make a Monkey Island movie, which later expanded into... expanded, well, it didn't... the movie project was really... they couldn't get that... make that happen, but they did the next best thing, which was make, to make another Monkey Island game. <laughs> And the cinematic feel definitely helps up the sort of excitement level. But also, they did do an excellent adventure game out of out of all of that. Oh yeah, totally. What Lucas Arts was going for is to not go with the games pixelated. And this game was made in 1997, and this is where the rise of 3D gaming already begun its reign. Instead, they decided yeah. to make the game into hand-drawn animation throughout. This, to me, would make the game age very well to even especially to this day in gaming and not to mention that they finally put voice acting on the table for the monkey island series guybrush has a finally has a voice the audio was really terrific just even the the listen through with the surround sound even for a 1997 game voice acting is on par you know everything feels like a animated feature but at the same time everything that i love from secret of monkey island it's done better here yes well this was this was the 12th and final game to use the Scum game engine, which LucasArts used for most, but not all of their uh, adventure games. They did one adventure game before the Scum engine. Yes, you can see that they pulled all the stops here, that they went the extra mile on graphics, they went the extra mile on music, they went the extra mile on cinematic portrayal, and really, the voice acting was really sort of the chair, like you said, the cherry on top. And uh, one, of, one of the great things about this game, uh, gameplay-wise, not only did they improve or keep up the sort of high standards of good puzzle designing, they also added completely new elements like the ship combat, the little mini-game, if you will, with the cannon, and they also brought back insult sword fighting. Oh yeah, the way they offered in the sword fighting here isn't what you call like, um, you know, combat and stuff. Instead, you have to figure out of an insult that rhymes with the fight because, you know, as they say, the rules on, on sword fighting on sea, you have to rhyme your fights. <laughs> this makes it twice as hard sometimes. I mean, not the rhyming thing, of course, that anybody can think of um, a word like stop and rhyme it with uh, mop. <laughs> but also, you have to figure out how to make the insult match with the rhyming word. And it just goes above and beyond with, like, what you said, the ship battle system, which is what another game called. Sid Meier's Pirates took heavily from, and another game called Sly 3 Honor Among Thieves also borrow heavily with the ship battle and battling the scallywags on board on the opposing ship. And as I stated in my review on that game, that was actually my favorite part of Sly 3. I really love this addition from um, in Curse of Monkey Island because you actually feel like you're in command and control of a pirate ship, which is much more piratey than the previous Monkey Island games before it. You know, not 
the entire game isn't filled with battleships and um, deciding to go on sword fights, but instead it still remained that um, you know that old school gameplay feel of what a point and click adventure game is supposed to be like, like point and click, figure out a puzzle, talking to characters. Thanks to the simplified interface, the interface of Curse of Monkey Island is brilliant. It's similar to the interface used in Full Throttle. When clicking on an object, the action coin pops up. You can then choose hand, eyes, or mouth, rather than going through the tiresome commands to click on an action, then click on an object from the previous Monkey Island games. The eyes are used to examine the object, the mouth initiates actions such as talk, eat, bite, and the hand is to do a certain action towards an object. The interface works perfectly and is flexible. It is also context sensitive, so the action choices change from the objects of interest, bringing a whole new dimension of some puzzle solving. You will of course have to use as many items throughout the game to solve a variety of puzzles. And to make the controls even better, the inventory is also, is also brought up with a simple right click. Out of all the controls of the Monkey Island series, this one here is the most simplistic and enjoyable to any player. And oh my goodness, the characters in this game is really, really great. I like the new crew that Guybrush Threepwood finally has in his crew, like <laughs> Buccaneer um, Barber. Hairstylists. <laughs> Buccaneer hairstylists. <laughs> Sorry. My the bad. Pirates of Barbary Coast, yes. And, uh, guess, you I, know, they're I, not I, um, as disrespectful as, compared to the other crew members of uh, Guybrush Threepwood, but they're probably the most humorous, the most easily distracted, and, um, <laughs> and I especially loved it when they were singing, during, when they were supposed to be chasing um, <laughs> the, the Conquistador. I forgot his name. Uh, uh, you mean uh, Ca uh, Captain Rottingham? Yeah, Captain Rottingham of the, yes, the Spanish fleet. French. Oh my <laughs> <God>. <laughs> French pirates. <laughs> I, think okay. you're I think you're thinking of Palido Domingo, the pale guy on the uh, on, on the beach. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! Before we get a little ahead of ourselves, oh my goodness, this game is really unpredictable at times, and it was really uh, disgusting, but totally unpredictable to find the location of where to find the map to uh, Blood Island. Blood Island. It was on Crazy. his skin. <laughs> <laughs> on the back of his <laughs> on, on his back basically <laughs> oh, yes. uh, bring out the coconut oil <laughs> <laughs> ah a pichu but I gotta say that you know even though I got stuck multiple times in this game for example being stuck inside of the belly of a snake and then later on get stuck <laughs> in the quicksand it was all feel rewarding and not, not to mention that as you go along in your journey it, it just feel it, it kept that adventurous feel from the original one and oh man the jokes in this game are just non-stop uh, the one thing that bursted me out laughing out loud this is not a spoiler but when Guybrush Threepwood escaped from, uh, you know, LeChuck's ship when it exploded, he stole one of the rings and he gave it to Elaine. <laughs> Wally showed yeah. up and he said, Oh, that's a nice diamond ring, Elaine. You know, LeChuck, LeChuck had it in his treasure hold. You know, the one with that ghastly, disfiguring voodoo curse on it. Well, I'm sure Guybrush wouldn't have given you that ring. <laughs> <laughs> and then immediately when he left, Elaine was so infuriated that he actually <laughs> put that around her finger and just when he was about she was about to punch him <laughs> she froze into gold yeah. <laughs> so basically your adventure is about finding a way to get elaine back to normal and battle the chuck once more with this time having him with a fiery beard aka the best beard in gaming and i also like that um guybrush threepwood returned to that character where he's a wannabe pirate and who makes a lot a bunch of mistakes and he feels uh disrespectful like unlike the second game where he's trying to be too hard to be a pirate and much more darker tone and i like the tone in this very game because just humorous non-stop and as well made it it feels more bigger than life than the original secret of monkey island am i right yeah but yeah the thing is that it has two like really big major locations plunder island at the very beginning and blood island and both have very extensive puzzles that are sort of solved internally whereas in monkey island 2 you have to keep going to three different islands to solve puzzles on each one here it's more like a call back to secret of monkey island where you had again two big locations melee island and monkey island 
It's more equally distributed, and it's also a callback from Secret of Monkey Island in the way that you're given these very specific goals on Plunder Island. Once again, you're, you're looking for three things, which is a map, a ship, and a crew. In Secret of Monkey Island, it was all about the three pirate trials. And then on Blood Island, it's finding the pieces of the uncursed diamond ring. There was a lot more puzzle variety there, because there's a... There are much more locations that you can go to and many more things on the island. Like the, the locations are more well crafted than say in Monkey Island 2 where every single location has kind of a singular purpose. There's so much to explore in The Curse of Monkey Island. The design team has written description over all the places and objects in this game to make it really interactive. These include objects that cannot be picked up or do not have real functions in the game. Yet they are more just parts of the background art since Guidebrush can look at them and be amused by them. This makes the replay value of this title much higher than the usual adventure game titles, because you are bounded to find something new every time you replay this game. Like Monkey Island 2, The Curse of Monkey Island offers two levels of difficulty. The regular version, which is uh, perfect for those who are playing this for the first time, and the Mega Monkey version. That makes the puzzles even twice as hard and feel much more sadistic. When you start this game, the level of difficulty you choose cannot be changed after you start the game. And with that being said, if you're playing Curse of Monkey Island for the first time, it is most recommended to play the regular version. And after you complete the game, change your experience with Mega Monkey. This Monkey Island game looks stunning. The cartoony style of the other games in the series still firmly place, but the third gate ups the ante considerably. Really, the visuals are bordering on a cartoony quality, and the animation is top-notch too. Many times I just love to look at the background, and a particular scene of the game just mesmerized at all the really well-done hand-drawn animation offered here. To say that the visual overhaul really gives the game character and life would be a huge understatement. The Curse of Monkey Island is one of those few rare games that actually has aged very well and that I don't think that it needs an HD special edition, but instead a re-release for those who haven't played it yet, or still have problems running this old game with Windows 7. Back on the sound of this game, it is just perfect. The voice acting and dialogue is so fantastically hilarious that you won't mind the slightest. I can't think of a single character that you end up that didn't have a sense of humor. The ability to interact with the game characters is priority for LucasArts. So there's a lot of speech in this game. Quite frankly, the voice acting is once again on par, and it's always very well done, and if it makes you laugh, you know that it's effective in humor. It pays a homage to pop culture, better Star Wars references than it was in Monkey Island 2, and even other references for other computer games like The Dig, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, and Myst. And not to mention that I love the easter egg of Manny Caravera's skull from Grim Fandango. And for the music, I have to say that it's not only the best soundtrack in the whole series, but perhaps one of the best soundtracks in PC games period. Whenever the music plays, it's forever memorable and perfectly fits the situation and location where Guybrush is at. The orchestra offered in this game just made it feel like it belonged in an animated movie, even furthering the atmosphere that the LucasArts team was going for, and they executed it flawlessly. And the music, uh, just, just, to sh uh, just to give you an idea how good the soundtrack of this game is, it's my favorite one in the series. Even the incidental tunes are memorable. One of my favorite themes from this game is a theme you only hear on one screen in the whole game, and it's when you're using the rowboat. <laughs> and the theme is called using a rowboat. So <laughs> that's how good the music is. Like even that insignificant little theme sounds amazing. Oh, I just want to ask you one thing. This has been a debate to um, all the Monkey Island fans uh, towards the title of this game. I know we talked about this, but everybody has been asking, what is the curse of Monkey Island since they only, they never made it to Monkey Island. They only went to <laughs> Blood Island. No, oh, they, they did go to Monkey Island at the very end. Oh shit, end. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, they were at the carnival that was on that was on Monkey Island. You know, not trying to make it too convoluted. I think the curse they're referring to is the curse put on Elaine by the magic ring that turns her a gold, into a gold statue. <laughs> so, that's my short answer. If a long answer, I could start looking about how the characters are all cursed to continuously return to Monkey Island time and again. But that wouldn't be true, because in Tales of Monkey Island, it's the first occasion when they didn't go back to Monkey Island. 
Well, I guess we basically covered everything about the Curse of Monkey Island. And the last thing I want to do to my viewers is to spoil anything from this very fantastic game. And to describe how awesome and how terrific this very game actually is, Hanu and I are once again going to give our own ratings towards the Curse of Monkey Island. So, my score for Curse of Monkey Island, a six fingers out of five. The game is definitely for everybody. You have to be a dreadfully staid gamer if you don't find yourself entertained by this title. While fans of the previous game in Monkey Island series may have the biggest laugh out of all the jokes of this game with the series, you don't have to know or have to experience any other Monkey Island game to enjoy this title. Guybrush's witty comments and humorous attitudes should keep you smiling and amused. In the end, The Curse of Monkey Island is more than just a worthy sequel to the greatest adventure game series, but it is indefinitely one of the best games in the whole adventure game genre. Yes, my score for the game, my score is a perfect five fingers out of five. I can't find a lot of faults in this game. It's just the, like we've mentioned before, the visual look, the voice acting, the puzzles, the story and how it's handled. This game is awesome. The graphics, awesome. The puzzles, awesome. The voice cast, awesome. The music, awesome. What more do you want from me? It's awesome. <laughs> So, overall, I would have to say, if you find a copy of A Curse of Monkey Island, it's an immediate buy. This is the best game in the entire Monkey Island series. There's nothing more I can say about that. With a band of vicious pirates are sailing out to sea. When you hear a gentle singing, you'll be sure to turn and flee. Oh, this is just ridiculous. Pirate, I was meant to be. Trim the sails and roam the sea. Stop, stop, stop! The brass is what will polish and the deck is what will mop. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you couldn't fry him with anything with orange. A uh, door hinge? <laughs> nah, guess the song's over then. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs>